Hey guys, welcome back and happy Thanksgiving Eve. Like, look how fast time is going by. I know I always say that, right? But it is. Time is flying because I guess I stay so busy. And I have like a half hour to talk to you guys about this topic. I have the munchies. How y'all doing, by the way? How's it going? How's it going out there in Facebook world? And YouTube world? So, excuse me, y'all. I have some snacks. I'm going to be munching on during my video. I'm not going to be very long, so I want to talk to you guys about absentee fathers, and this topic came to mind based on, based on this encounter that I have, what I've been having with, this associate of mine, right? So he's a single black male in his 50s. I know, like, damn, 50s, that's pretty old. It is. Yeah, he's like, and his, like, he's like 55. 55 years old. I should have did this before the video, but I don't have much time because I'm actually here getting ready to meet up with um, another associate of mine to be their mock client so they can do uh, practice on psychological testing, so... She's going to administer the waste to me, which is an intelligence test. And I'm going to be her role play client. But y'all, now this guy, 55 years old, has two daughters. Right? Now his daughters, I believe they're teenagers. And I remember when we first met... I actually just got the bus not too long ago, so. But yeah, I remember like when we first met, which was like several months ago, he was like telling me about his interest in dating and his struggles and how it's difficult for him to find the right one, so to speak. And I'm listening to him, right? And then he told me he tells me that he has like two daughters who are teenagers and I'm like okay I'm like how's your relationship with your daughters it was like well I hardly get to see them I'm like you hardly get to see them I'm like you they both everybody lives in LA like how is it difficult to see your own children if you both li you all live in the same city right all three of you live in the same city and so he was married but I guess he got a divorce from his ex-wife which is the mother of his two daughters and he was like, yeah, I don't, they don't really come to visit me that often. You know, I, I rarely see them. And he was like, maybe you can talk to them. And I'm like, uh, first of all, uh, no. I am not about to play nobody's stepmom. And second of all, like, I don't have no interest in him on that level. Like, our association is more business related. And that's it. That's it. So, so he goes to like, yeah. And he was talking about how, you know, he's been single for a while and he want to find a partner, but all of the struggles that he has, da, 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 women this, women that. And I'm just sitting here like, dude, you got two daughters that you don't see. Anytime, I know, okay, I can speak for myself because that's what I want to talk about in this video briefly. I know anytime a guy tells me he has kids and especially if, he reveals that he don't have a relationship with his kids. That is a red flag to me. And see, men will try to put it on the women to say, oh, she don't let me see my kids. That's bullshit. And if that's the case, it's a reason why she don't let you see your kids. You know, I think that that's a huge, huge red flag. Right? Like, you have teenage daughters and you don't see them. Like, the way he's talking as if he probably may see them, like, twice a year, maybe once a year, if that, like, maybe he probably, he probably seen them at all in 2018, so I'm like, okay, 
and you expect me to be interested in you like he's trying to like express interest in me in so many different ways but i'm like you got teenage daughters that you don't have a relationship with now first of all first of all my standard is that i don't usually talk to guys who have kids but i understand that given that i'm in my mid-30s i'm 35 years old the dating scene can be kind of tricky around this age because most men do have kids you know or they've been married before you know that may be the downside which it also could be like a benefit too because i remember i was talking to my therapist and she was like well it's not necessarily a bad thing that a guy has kids all the time because that can teach him how to treat you and not only that but to treat you know potential kids that will come after that so i'm like okay if he already has experience right in that area but i typically don't date guys with kids i'm like i don't have kids so why do i gotta put up with somebody else's baggage in that area if i don't have kids but i think i'm being more flexible and what do y'all think by the way y'all let me know feel free to chime in and show your perspective on this topic i'm like okay first of all i'm not interested in this guy i'm just talking to you guys about this issue because this is a prevalent issue in our society and i some i kind of get I, I think i'm getting annoyed by it because he don't have a relationship with his daughters but he trying to form a relationship with me and i always usually do this when guys have kids and i see they don't really talk to their kids like that or they fell out with a baby mom i send them dudes right back to their baby mom i say don't be trying to holler at me when you're not on good terms with your baby mama, no. Try to use me as a fallback. Like, no, go and fix whatever went wrong between you and your baby mom. Then you can come holler at me. Possibly, but then even still, I don't know. You know, and then in this guy's case, who's in his mid-50s and has these two teenage daughters, I noticed, like, every time we cross paths, like, he'd be going out his way to try to have a, a relationship with me outside of, like, the business, right? So he's like oh what are you doing oh you know i want to go out for lunch you know there's this restaurant like he's trying to take me out and i'm like nah, nah dog like and every time he acts i always decline like i'm like i just ate i'm straight and he just steady trying and so i thought about it the other day and i'm like okay considering what he's told me about you know how he has these daughters and that he don't spend time with them I think he's overcompensating. Seriously, I think he's overcompensating for the lack of relationship and connection that he has with his daughters. He's trying to gain that through a relationship with me. And I'm sure it's not only just me, but probably with other women that he comes across. And I'm like, no, that ain't happening, buddy. It ain't, uh, uh. Go and reach out to your goddamn daughters and talk to them. I'm just sitting here trying to talk to me. I want to be all nice and friendly, but I can imagine. Obviously, if you don't have a relationship with your daughters, like, come on, what kind of shit is that? What kind of man is that? Honestly, I don't have no respect for men like that. Like, if you ain't trying to make no effort to make things right, I don't care. Ain't no excuse. Men be trying to say, oh, it's a woman, you know, the baby mom won't let me. What's up, Mark? You're like, the baby mom won't let me see? Nah, don't try to put it on the woman. What the hell are you doing or not doing that's creating that kind of situation? Because something is not right there. And what we ain't about to do is you about to be all up on me when you don't even have a relationship with your daughters. I feel like that's so wrong on so many levels, you know? Hell no. Hell no. And then just recently, y'all. So, I don't know Thanksgiving is tomorrow. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm hungry. But y'all know Thanksgiving is tomorrow, right? And so, he got the nerve to ask me. This was a couple days ago, I think maybe on Monday. Talking about, oh, what you doing on Thursday? I'm like, I don't really have no plans for uh, Thanksgiving. So he was like, oh, I'm going to Vegas. And I was saying, if you want to come. I'm like, hell no. <laughs> My mom, like, I said it to him, but I'm like, I don't know. 
But I know he got the idea that I probably not interested. You say you like the banana? <laughs> it's good too. Oh, this is good. But I'm like, mm -mm. I'm not. I might go with you to Vegas. He mentioned something about a hotel room. Like, oh, all you gotta do is get a hotel or something. He said. I I kind of tuned his ass out. I don't be listening to the shit that his ass be saying. Unless it's business with me, I'm like child boo. Mm -mm. So on that note, let me let me uh, check the time. Okay. Yeah. On that note, it's like, man, I want to ask y'all a question. Like, men who have kids, why? Especially if you're not active in your child's life or the children's life. Like, why? I, I, I mean, it's apparent that men try to overcompensate. When you don't have the relationship with your kids, you try to gain it through relationship with other people. And I'm just like, why? It ain't going to happen with me. Because I, I see through the bullshit, man. I see through it. I see that he's trying to overcompensate. Because he's doing, he's too, being too fucking friendly. All these making trying to make all these accommodations. Oh, why wanna take me out to dinner? Wanna take me out to lunch? You just do. It ain't happening, man. Invite me over to barbecue and wanna take me to bait. Nah, it ain't happening, dog. Like, no. I'm not interested. And I'm like, hi, I'm sure he should get the picture by now. But he's trying way too hard. I'm not in first of all, you're ass too old. You're fifty five years old. I have no interest in dating somebody that goddamn old. Probably the most the oldest I would go is maybe ten years older than me. So a guy would be in his forties. But fifty? No, y'all. And I know see women, that's the thing. A lot of women don't have no fucking standards. So when men come across me, they're like, Oh, you suck up. I am not stuck up. I just have standards and I ain't about to sit up here and date. No goddamn old man who got kids that he don't take care of. That to me is the biggest turnoff. Like, come on, you cannot sit up here and blame it on the woman. What excuse for y'all who are watching? Drop a comment below and give me an example of a situation where a man can use it as an excuse for why he is not present in his child's life by blaming it on the mother. Drop the comment below. Because in my mind, I'm like, nah, man. And even if it's like a legal situation, you got men that will fight for custody of their kids. They will find a way. Like, you can't sit up here and use that as no excuse. And even these girls are grown. And you got to understand and tell me that, oh, because he know, you know that I am a therapist and I, you know, study psychology. He's like, oh, maybe you can talk to them, trying to make it seem like it's them. No, motherfucker, it's you. You the grown-ass man. You, the, you older than them. So the accountability falls on your shoulders. I'm still been trying to say, oh, maybe you can talk talk to them and, and figure out. No, I ain't talking to your goddamn kids. That's your responsibility. That's not my responsibility. What's what's up with people in our society, man? Man, help me understand. Why don't y'all want to take care of your kids? But you want to be all up in between the woman's legs and all up in her face. I'm like, get the fuck out of my face, man. Don't be texting me. Don't be calling me. I'm not interested because you are not even being a man. I can't even respect. I can't only see you as a man. You're not a man in my eyes, you know? Like, nah. Hell, fuck no. No goddamn excuse for that at all. Some men may be watching this who got kids and made me feel offended by my bluntness, but it is what it is. I know you got women out there that they don't care. They're like, oh, well, he liked me. He showed me a good time. Nah. I don't care about that. He can be really. He has been totally respectful towards me. Hasn't disrespected me or none of that. But man gotta go back and fix that problem you say don't finish the banana i don't know i'm about to finish this mm -mm. 
I am definitely about to finish this. Why you want me to finish the banana? Because you want to eat it? <laughs> Look at that squirrel right there eating the food. What the hell is that squirrel eating? Like a little round green thing. Now, they cute when they eating, but when they be looking at me standing up on their hind legs, I'll be like, hold on. <laughs> hold on. Y'all let me know. I done killed this banana. I done killed my little, my little, uh, Slim Jims. My Slim Jims are good, so I might as well give me some more of those. Excuse me, y'all. I gotta finish eating this. Nope, nope, nope. I thank God that I actually grew up with in a two-parent household. My dad was very much present in my life. But it's unfortunate that the like kids grow up and they have to suffer, you know? And some kids will be like, well, it don't affect me. I've, I've talked to adult clients that I have, like clients that I have now. And treatment, and they be like, "Oh, growing up without a father, it don't impact me." You know, I mean, you can see a person from the outside looking in can definitely see the impact that growing up with an absentee father has had. But in their mind, because they were able to cope with it and manage and get through life, they feel like, "No, oh, it ain't impact me. I'm good." I'm like, "Oh, it impact your ass." This is the reason why. A woman go from one man to the next man to the next man to like you're looking for a father figure you're looking for this manhood that should have been there when you was younger come on it's, it's the void that you're trying to fill that you ain't never gonna fill and trying to find a man it's just it ain't gonna happen you gotta come to terms and get healing from the absentee father that was not there that's a huge thing, and a lot of people try to minimize it because it's so prevalent in our society where you have children, boys and girls, who grow up without a father. And because it's so common, it's just like, oh, it's not a big deal. Oh, it's a big deal. It's a difference. Trust and believe. It's a difference between children who grow up with a father and children who don't, man. Especially when that father is active in their life, it loves them, and takes care of them, and then you have a child who doesn't have that presence of a, a father man like we're wired in a certain way to need both parents and when you don't have it it's a problem and i just don't see how men want to sit up here and be going around different women all up in a woman's face all up in her fucking phone trying to call her and all of this but you ain't call your own daughter? No. Whatever is going on, I don't know what's going on. I ain't asking, and then really, I don't care to know. But it's something that's there that is keeping him from reaching out or even keeping his daughters from even wanting to have a contact with their dad. Because I'm like, what daughter don't want to talk to their daddy? I know I call my dad all the time. You know, not every single day, but... When I think about him to the point where I want to talk to him, I call my dad. I reach out to him. I don't wait. Oh, my dad need to call me. And if he don't call me, I ain't calling him. No, I'm calling my dad. Sometimes it's not the man's fault. Some women play victim all because they want to play the system for benefits reason. I, Mark, I don't get that. You got to go further and explain that because that don't make no sense to say that a woman wants to play the victim. That's bullshit. Sorry, yes, I'm a woman and I may be biased, but I'm going to call you out. That is bullshit. Women play the victim to get benefits from the system. That don't make no goddamn sense. The system don't pay that much money. What kind of what benefits? No. 
That don't make no, I thought, no, y'all, that's to me, that's, a, that's such an excuse to not be a man. If a man was a man and doing what he's supposed to do, a woman would not have to do that. That's like a last resort. What woman wants to rely on the system? No, that makes no sense at all. So you're saying that women just use men as sperm donors to get pregnant and then dish them to the side and then go to the, the, the system to get financial support? That don't make no goddamn sense. I'm taking, you say you're talking out of experience. I have a friend who's passing the same situation. That's, I think, no, I think that's your interpretation of it. But I don't think that's quite accurate. Men, women, help me understand this because, nah. Nah, man. I think if you were to ask women, I would say that women actually would prefer, especially if a man who is respectful towards her and is treating her right, a woman would prefer the man to be there as opposed to this replacement of a, a system coming in to step in to support her financially. You, you no know, man can convince me that that's what a woman's intentions are from the get-go, that, oh, she just want the system to come in and want to kick the man out. No. How has she been? Y'all make it seem like women be striking gold by living off the system. No. If a man was taking care of the household, what happened to a real man that know how to take care of the household, pay the bills? Like, where are those men at? Because if they were there in her a woman's life, she would not have to. In my eyes, my perception, this could be my bias because I am a woman, even though I don't have kids. I mean, I've also been exposed to women who have, you know, and even my own sisters. And I, I'm like, nah, women use the system as a last resort, meaning when all other options are gone, then that's what well, they fall back on. When he tried to reach to reach out, the woman made accusations on him. What kind of accusations? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about that. Unless there's abuse in the picture, and that's a totally different story. Then, yeah, I can see why a woman would not want the man in the household or to live with the man and just want to push him out of the picture if there's abuse. But I'm not talking about that. Nah. Man, y'all black men need to stop making excuses, man. Talking about, oh, women push her aside, women play the nah, man. Be a man. That's all. That's what I'm saying. See, when I start talking about my standards and stuff like that, right? Some men be like, "Oh, your standards are too high. You know, you need to just date an average man. If you date an average man, then he gonna treat you better than the men who are not average. You know, compared to men, you know, basically who have decent incomes and are well off financially and higher up on the uh, social hierarchy." And I'm like, uh, "No." Somebody actually made that comment today to say, "Oh, men, average man." I say, "No," because you get the average man meaning like a lower income guy struggling financially is dependent upon a woman to take care of his ass and that ain't gonna be me sorry i don't mind contributing to the household expenses but if you're looking for me to take care of your ass it ain't happening you know and then women get pregnant with this by this man who has low income and then that's what it like no duh it's gonna be issues you can predict that shit with the 90 percent accuracy before a baby comes into the picture if given certain circumstances in that situation where there's minimum income and all these stressors surrounding the situation then yeah you can predict that somebody gonna bail out because it's just too much to bear a lot of times people just not prepared for that when that baby comes you know and it's usually the man who bails out he's like fuck it and he go and do the same thing with another woman and get another woman pregnant. Nah, man. Nah. But if he was financially set, that would lessen the likelihood that something like that would happen. It's because these men are not financially set, man. You want to sit up here and blame. Don't blame the woman. Kind of fucking... See, that's where I differ, man. Because I ain't used to that kind of style. Like, even in my past relationships, my last one that was three years... Even though I have my own income, and even though I'm able and willing to contribute financially, my ex always said I don't have to pay anything. He paid for every single thing. Every, when I, I say every everything, literally, like cover all the bills, right? 
And if I choose to contribute to whatever the light bill or, you know, of course I would buy food mostly. That's what my contribution was. I would buy food and sometimes take care of the, like, the side expenses and stuff like that. But, no. He had that. That's some, that's, traditionally, that's always been a man's role. Not to say a woman can't meet him halfway, but if a man makes a certain amount of income, he got that. Outside of a woman having to contribute. If a woman wasn't there in the picture, I'm talking about a man who's able to stay on his own two feet, regardless if he's with a woman or not. You get what I'm saying? And so when he finds a woman that he's going to date, she's just going to come in and help to support that and add more income to the household. But he already got the household expenses because he already been doing that because he already got it. And I mean, I don't know no other way to say it. But a lot of y'all men, y'all just like, huh? What? Y'all don't know what that look like because y'all are dependent upon women to help y'all split the bills 50-50 because you cannot afford to stay in an apartment by yourself. I don't... That ain't my kind of man. Sorry. That's where we different. Y'all may take offense to my perspective on that, but I don't date those kind of men. I date men... I ain't say you gotta be rich. Shit, he ain't gotta be no fucking uh, millionaire or a uh, wealthy man and got all his, these zeros in his bank account. I'm not talking about that. And that's where some men quickly go to assume, like, oh, well, you're a gold digger. You ain't got your money. you a foot dragger. You did. No. That's the whole other end of the spectrum. Y'all going to the other extreme. I ain't talking about that. I'm just talking about a man and who's a man. That's the only way I know how to describe it. And in my mind, a man is a man, a person who's able to provide and take care of himself financially, meaning he can pay everything. If he's in an apartment or written a condo, he can pay the rent for housing, food car transportation all of that food he got it he's doing that already on his own before he meet me but a lot of y'all man maybe y'all ain't doing that anyway i don't understand the system in the u.s but in the uk it's a different ball game i got two colleagues facing the same situation so you in the uk you facing the same situation what situation in terms of the what the woman put the man on what, child support or she depending on the system? Child, that's why I don't have no kids, man. And I screen dudes before I even get involved. And that's the reason we have this conversation about this guy, this associate, this guy that I came across. And I'm just like, nah, man. And that's the thing. Like, outside of the whole parenting thing, he good. He got income. You know, like, business-wise, he's straight. But when it comes to marriage and the family and the kids situation he dropped the ball because he already showed that he's not capable from what happened with his first wife you know i'm like nah man you got two adult teenage daughters i mean i say adult but they they had it there you know i don't know is that i think maybe like 15 16 years old they're like in high school teenagers and talking about he don't have no relationship with them and, nah man Nah, help me understand, cause that nah, ain't no way. I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it, and I'm very understanding person, but that don't mean that I have to put myself in that kind of situation. I can understand, and and for guy is able to explain what got him to that point, which he ain't really give me the full details, you know, cause man quick to point the finger at the woman. No, what? did you do or not do that led to that situation because something ain't that enough and men and their egos man it's that shit is common like come on your ego like our society it promotes this whole idea that oh a man need to hit it you know or score or have like one up on a woman and mistreat women it's almost like that men are praised for doing that even back in high school you know, the guys get praised, like, oh, you hit it, you know, you score, it's like they, they getting points, like they on a, a basketball team or football team getting points just because they have sex with a girl, not even committing to her, it's not the expectation they should commit to her, but just to score, so to speak, meaning they fuck, and then all of a sudden, everybody around them giving them props and high fives, and that same mentality is internalized, and throughout their adulthood, they carry that same approach. Going around here acting like scoring and hitting a woman 
sexual, sleeping with her sexually, like, that's something. No, that ain't shit. If you can't put a ring on it, if you can't start, build a family, that's what should be praised. Not a man's ability to fuck a woman. Anybody can fuck. But y'all know it. I do have to go. Continue this conversation below. I might come back and do a part two, but I do have a meeting at 4 o'clock. So, yeah, I'm on the West Coast. So, I will catch you guys later. Happy holidays. And I'll probably come back tomorrow, actually, and do another video. But love you guys. Continue the conversation below, man, because we got we to gotta talk about this because it's, it's bad. It's bad, man.